Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being a show where I talk about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Rebel. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Well, first and foremost, we had the whole situation, which I thought was kind of fascinating. Obviously, we have our opening where everybody's everybody's doing some lovemaking and stuff like that. It's cool. And then the lovemaking gets interrupted by... Hey, Luke in a very compromised position. And it's like, oh, it got sent to everyone to the point Luke is now losing his job. Because at first, like, you know, uh, Cassidy's thinking like, oh, you just sent it to me. It's like, oh, no, it went to everyone. My ex, Tamsin, she sent it to all of my contacts. Now I have to quit. Because in particular, he's not getting fired. He has to resign because... They have to make it, he has to go to like sex um, rehab for like a sex addiction, even though he doesn't have one. But at the very least, this will be some means of salvaging his career. Like, obviously, Benji and him are on the same page of like, yeah, we know how this has to go. But obviously, for Cassidy, she's not willing to just kind of let things go like this. She wants to help Luke. And so, Rebel and Cruz show up in time. And obviously, Cassidy's kind of talking about that. And. I love the whole situation of Cruz and Benji are walking away and just talking about like, yeah, these young kids these days are like, I know, right? And it's like, oh yeah, they want to like change everything. It was like, well, Cassie's like, we're here to change what's broke. It's just like two old men's being like, Jesus, this girl, I know, right? It's just they're having that moment. And I love Rebel being like, oh, so that's your friend? It's like, yeah. It's like, well, you know, you don't have to be, you know, I'm too stubborn to offer it, but you don't have to be too prideful to ask your mother for help. She's like, mom, will you help? It's like, fine. Introduce me to your friend. Obviously, there's a conversation between Benji and um, Cruz about the whole situation. At the very least, what at least what the deal is like, okay, we'll sign the settlement. At the very least, take the valve off the, the market. And it's like, nope, our client's not going to go for it. Like, it's not like Benji would say like, hey, we can compromise on this. Like, he'd be more willing to, but it's because of the CEO of somewhere. He's not going to compromise on that. It's like, nope. It's like, no matter what you do, at the very least, pull it off and get examined. It's like, nope, I already know my client. He's too damn stubborn to go down that route. So... And obviously, Cruz being like, yeah, I'm going to give you this golf club back because if I don't, I might smash every window in your building. So, so we also have Rebel and Luke. Obviously, it turns out like his ex is getting back in. This is revenge porn situation. And so, Rebel puts uh, Cassidy and Lana on it. And then Rebel does her thing of like using this as an opportunity. It's like, oh, man, there's more videos that come out and um, that can come out and you have... um. You have Benji being like, whoa, 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 what kind of video is it? And it's like, well, based on the way Luke said, borderline snuff him. So he's like, oh, geez. It's like, yeah, I mean, we can make this go away. I mean, gee, I mean, God, like, what this would do to your company's, like, reputation, even if he doesn't work here, like, more videos coming out. So you can try and talk to your boss. He's like, I'm not, like, talk to your clients. Like, I know, but, like, he's not going to listen. It's like, you can be very convincing when you want to be, Benji. So, and obviously, you know, Rebel and um, Cruz end up leaving, you know, hand in hand. So... Like, yeah, uh, her quick thinking kind of turned that in their advantage. Th- really quickly, let's go to the Benji situation where he's talking to the CEO of Stonemore. And I thought it was such an interesting conversation because it does make you feel a little conflicted in certain regards because, yes, the whole Angela thing makes him seem like, oh, yeah, like, once again, if there's smoke, there's fire. The fact that you're hiring Angela to make it so that they, uh, you're pushing for them to settle means you do have something to hide. You know that there's something there that can be found, you know, and even Rebels says that later on. They're only going this hard to make us settle because they're scared. They know we potentially find something. That's why they're doing all these shitty tactics and kind of buy their time. So, what ends up happening, interest like, the, the Stonewall CEO was kind of saying, like, the fact is, he doesn't even want to do what Benji's saying. It's just like, all you have to do is pull out the market and examine it. Then he's like, no, 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 no. Basically, you saw what happened when you, your associate, Luke, it's like, you know, all the, the that leak into all your client. What was the first thing that went through your mind, Benji? It was like, the firm's reputation. It's like, exactly. He's like, basically, like, me, you asking me to pull this valve off the market is going to lead to a lot of people. All they're going to know is, all they're going to hear is, there's a problem with that. Problem, problem, problem. Even when we come back and say, there is no problem. Even when we were like, oh, man, there's nothing to worry about. We're pretty sure, but we want to check it regardless. It's like, whoa, you know that something's up, so that's why you're checking it in the first place. And it's like, well, we're going to put it back on the market. Oh, no, 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 no. There was a problem with it. Who's to say there's not a problem now? It's like, for him, it's like his business, his company will tank. And for him, it's like, this is important to him because this is, this, um, play, like, just like it's important to Cruz because of Helen, this, I mean, uh, because of, um, uh, Sarah, it's also important to him because he's saying, like, well, his family went through this. He even talks about, like, his dad, like, when his dad hit 40, he couldn't play ball with him without getting winded. So, for him, it's like, 
I'm doing this. It's like, you might think like I'm doing this because I'm the evil bit bag CEO, but it's like, no, the fact of the matter is what we do is good and we help people by doing it. So I'm not going to jeopardize the lives we can help because yes, the valve has helped some people, but it's screwed over others. So um, he's big into the no. And so that for a moment makes me feel a little conflicted because I'm like, so what are we dealing with here? Is it the thing is that yes, legitimately he does want the settlement because he doesn't believe like he's like, I don't want there to be any doubt created, you know? So it, it's either that or it could be just the situation of like, yes, this is important to him, but it's like it saves so many lives. It's not just about money, which, uh, you know, it's like depending on how you want, whether you want to be pessimistic about it or whether you want to be optimistic about it. You know, some people might be a little more cynical, but like it's always about the money. You know, so it just it depends on where you slide on that on that spectrum. But um, whether or not he has the most altruistic, like I said, the Angela thing shows that he does it. But it could just be like for him, it's like this valve saves so many lives. Yeah, not it, yes. There's a danger with anything. Nothing's foolproof. Yeah, there might be some people that you're sick and die. But it's also like the fact is you're denying it that your valve has nothing to do with it, and it seems like you know that it does. But it's like it's that thing where it seems like, and it's also like. It feels like he's judging like it does way more good than bad. It's like it might be the thing of, man, for every 10,000 people it saves, one person dies. And so in his mind, that might be a ratio that's uh, suitable or at least the the numbers are more in the valve's favor could be the argument. But then that's like, no, but you take that, that number starts racking up. I mean, there's an entire group of people who are suffering from this. You know, one person, you know, hundreds, like now it's like potentially thousands and who knows all the people that are being affected by this valve you don't eventually those numbers could rack up and I, I made a huge number but it could be more so like for every one person there's at least three people sick or something like that like once again that ratio still could like swing a certain way you know so that has to be kind of considered with everything so I just thought that was a fascinating discussion like I said because it made me kind of feel like maybe he's not as bad but then you also have to adding in everything else makes you go maybe he is you, you just don't know and so obviously it's the conversation of are we going to take the settlement especially because we end up finding out that they're not um like letting, because obviously, like, you know, Helen's kind of worried about it, and obviously Maddie's like, I need you to survive this, and then Rebel brings up everything, it's like, the fact of the matter is, you know, getting crews on our side, you, you reaching out to me, and me reaching back out to you, very slim, look where we are right now, very slim chances to get crews on our side, look where we are now, slim chance of you having a sense of humor with everything going on, look where we are now. So it's like, if I was a betting person, I would bet on you. I'd bet the entire house on you, Helen. So for Rebel, it is a thing of like, I believe in you. Well, you don't need to know the odds because time and time again, you've proved the odds wrong and come out on top. But now, like, Nate has to bring up news that, like, the insurance come the, the hospital isn't going to go through with the surgery because it turns out she owes, like, a hundred and, like, basically $150,000 um, from all the, like, past procedures and stuff like that because she owes so much money. Normally, under normal circumstances, they do the surgery, she'd have to pay afterwards, but it's like she owes such a large amount of sum, it's like we can't add more to it until she pays off that. And obviously, Rebel's like, don't you have a conscience? And the lady's like, Essentially, it comes down to the thing of, I'm just doing my job. I don't like that it has to be this, that there are people who die every day. The fact of the matter is, I try to do some good. I legitimately can't help those people sometimes. I'm just kind of like in the accounting of things. So I take the money I earn from this job and I try to put some good out in the world. You, and it's just like, there are plenty of people like you who come in here try to make me seem like I don't have a conscience that, you know, I'm a terrible human being that I kind of get off. And it's like, no, like, you know, I would lose my job if I crossed the line for you. And that money, I, you know, it's that thing of like, you know, pass, get, um, um, pushing it forward, you know, um, type of situation of like, right, like I can at least take this money from my job and do good with it. So it's like pay off. Helen's that and then we can talk about the surgery so now it becomes a conversation of like well where the hell do we get this money she tries to go to Cruz Cruz doesn't have that type of money they're in like dire straits when it comes to money situations as well so for Cruz it comes down to potentially the settlement because it's like with the settlement they could get the money necessary to um help pay off um Helen's debt so but obviously it comes down to a conversation of whether or not they take the you know uh deal and obviously, as a lawyer, it's not his job to push them one way or another. It's just his place to give them the facts. But, you know, Rebel saying, like, you have a very specific, you know, a, like, a, you have a very, like, 
symphonic, like vo uh, symphony type of voice of like you could your tones could basically sway people one way or the other. So she's wanting him to sway people more towards not taking the deal. But when the conversation comes up later on, it's like Maddie is like, no, let's take the deal. At the very least, my mom needs that surgery now. So they want to pay me money. Fine. The fact of the matter is I'm already going to lose this baby. I cannot go through that with that loss without my mom. I cannot lose my mom too. And it's just like hearing that so gut wrenching. And obviously everyone in that room understands where she's coming from because also what this comes down to because basically the amount of money they get wasn't it like 300 million or something like that and so that basically everyone involved would get basically like a hundred thousand so it's like oh so that's what our lives are basically worth at the end of the day obviously they you know because even um ben uh, benji came to them and it's like tell them what it is it's like yeah i don't even like the way the dude talks to me but he's my client he pays the bills so yes he's giving you until midnight that's also another thing for rebels like the fact is he putting a, a timer straight on it kind of shows like yo he wants this to disappear for a reason so there's that element to it but it's also like benji's like do whatever you can to squeeze as much money out of this dude because he's willing just to pay whatever it takes to make this go away so get whatever money you can to help everyone so it's the thing where you kind of see like yeah benji kind of seems like oh kind of you know a suit but at the same time you do see like he isn't just like a completely and utterly heartless monster that there is something there to it you know so there is, you know, especially they're working on a Luke situation, which for him, it's like, you aren't going to like, you're trying to blackmail me into it, but you're going to help Luke in the same way Cassidy is because both of you have too much of a bleeding heart. So it's like, yeah, you're trying to blackmail me, but you're going to help Luke regardless because he's someone in need. So I don't have to worry about that looming over my head. So I've done what I've done. So this is where we are with this situation. So... And even to the point, she calls up Grady and tries to take out another mortgage on the house, which Grady was like, no, 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 we're not going to do that because, yes, you could win this case or you could not win this case and it could jeopardize us being out on the street. Like, it's like, no, 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 like, Ziggy would be fine living in a shack. It's like, yeah, but we need stability, right? Like, if we lose our home, like, everything could come falling apart. Like, she could backpedal and, you know, it's like, we got to do this for her sobriety, which even Grady's like, I appreciate what you're doing. He's like, don't sign my, si forge my signature. She's like, fine, I won't. He's like, honestly, we're making progress normally you wouldn't have these conversations with me normally you would have just went ahead and just forward my signature so for him it's like oh we are taking steps forward the fact is you are listening to me that i am a partner in this obviously she kind of goes against that a little bit later on when the whole ziggy thing of like getting ziggy's uh i mean to be fair ziggy offered it up um her college fund and it's like yeah use that to, you know it's like for her it's like spending time seeing maddie seeing kind of like because she was going through the files that Cruz had got you know from them and it's like how can people do this it's like this is like the, the system is shitty and it's like yeah that's why i kind of skirt outside that line sometimes just because of the yeah there are checks and balances but the system isn't 100% fair. I mean, a lot of people will tell you, no, it's rigged against you. It's like, what do they always say when it comes to gambling? The house always wins, and the favor is always in favor of the house, even in the, in the criminal system. So it's just kind of like, things aren't, yeah, like I said, there's supposed to be a checks and balance, but it's not like everything's a hundred percent like there's not a pure like, to this triangle, it's not like there's a pure equilibrium to everything. Um, It's kind of like, the point like it's not like everything it's not like oh man this is a perfect 60 degrees around the trifecta that is you know the criminal system that there are there are faulty parts to it that it's not all 100% copacetic and that everything not everything works in complete conjunction not everything works in perfect harmony you know uh, so Ziggy wants to become a lawyer so she can fix that. So it's like, all right, Rebel is just like, well, if you made this decision, fine. Because for her, it's like, I don't, Maddie's in there trying to have her baby and she's worried about her mom dying. So it's like, she's about to lose that baby, you know, baby being born and everything. She can still, she will eventually lose that baby and she needs her mom. So I, we need to help her out. So don't tell your dad. And she's like, obviously, eventually Grady's going to find out and that's going to turn into a whole issue. That just when they're taking steps forwards, this is going to be a huge and massive step back because it's like, right. Oh, we had that conversation before. Like, oh, you're, you're listening to me. You're bringing me into these conversations. Oh, now you're not. So it's like, for him, it's probably a thing of this, especially now knowing that Ziggy wants to be a lawyer. He's like, how are we going to afford that? Like, cause she's like, even, you know, Rebel told Ziggy, he's like, I don't think I'll be able to pay you back. But for her, it's like, it doesn't matter. This money is necessary here. Here and now, so luckily they were able to do um, Helen's surgery, um, and everything worked out. Uh, luckily, but at, you do notice that through it, like Misha ends up noticing something interesting about the vow. So we get into that later on, 
And um, obviously Rebel's talking to Cruz about it, and it turns out Angela's listening. And I was like, I was so curious like what she was going to do with such a limited amount of time. So when the time comes, we find out she snuck in and stole the valve. It's like, once again, it's like, you know what's going on, but I guess for her, it's like, I've got a job to do. Whether she works for Stone War, like, on, like, she's legitimately, like, maybe she's, like, their their fixer is what I'm assuming that's what she her role is she's the fixer like anytime they have an issue she goes and gets stuff done um whether she's like an outside hired fixer or where she's always their go-to fixer is kind of the question I'm curious about so obviously it's like I have loyal much like Benji it's like I have loyalty to my company um my clients the thing is um Benji, yes, he would do a lot for his client. This is a lot. He for because Benji might skirt the line of like, yeah, he does stuff that are legal loopholes. They're scummy, but they're still within the confines of legality. Doing what Angela did, I don't think, but I don't believe Benji would do that. I don't think Luke would do that. Like no matter what, it's like even we skirt that line ourselves, we would never cross it like that. That's a, a bridge too far that even Benji wouldn't go down. So. It's going to be interesting, and the sad thing is, like, Angela just, Angela just seems like, it's so sad, too, because it seems like she's, especially her and Cruz are hitting it off. I mean, it's like, you got to feel some type of way of, like, and she doesn't show it, so she's able to compartmentalize, like, I guess for her, it's like, oh, it's a job. Not unless she's, like I said, compartmentalizing and hiding it, but it's like, the fact is that she could kiss Cruz, like, oh, you haven't kissed someone since, uh, since your wife for the past 40 years. It's like, knowing that you're still getting close to him and manipulating him, she... To be fair, she's playing it close to the vest because she's not trying to seem too eager to be like, oh, if I were you, I'd take that deal. It's like, no, she's playing it like being like, oh, my therapist taught me something. Basically, you wait, you you imagine both things that are happening. You basically view their outcome. Whichever one makes you tense, you don't go with it. The one that relaxes you, you go with it. So that was her way of playing the middle ground. But obviously, she was hoping things would sway him more so towards taking the settlement. So... There's a, that's a lot of interest, but that's also like, that's dark and messed up. That it's like, I'm sure Angela's really good at what she does. So she was able to probably avoid security cameras because she knows they're eventually going to look like what happened to that vow. Like how the hell did it just disappear from a hospital? So once again, showcasing that like, yeah, uh, that CEO dude can't claim he didn't know anything. Maybe it's a thing he learned of after the fact, but the fact is that he's still trying to cover it up speaks massive volume. So. Huh, that's just so interesting timing. Uh, my TV's on right now, and it's flipping through different stuff. Uh, I just I have my TV muted right now, and um, it goes into, like, screensavers and stuff like that, like, on um, my Fire Stick. And lo and behold, it just popped up Married with Children. I just thought that was kind of ironic. Uh, once again, Katie Seagal and everything, so I just thought that was interesting. I just happened to look over, and it's like, oh, there are the Bundys. Uh, nevertheless, tangent and all that aside, like I said, I just thought that was interesting timing. I felt like noting it. Uh, regardless. So, there's that. There's also the Luke thing. Now, that was interesting. Because Luke's coming at this from a perspective with his circumstances of he doesn't want to screw over Tamsin. Because, like, they've been friends ever since they were kids. It's like, yeah, the relationship didn't work out. But she is someone that's important to him. It's like, yeah, she might be destroying my life. But I don't want to get revenge against her by destroying hers. And as obviously when um, Luke... Uh, Lana and Cassidy sit down with her. At first, she's playing coy, like, oh, I have no idea what's going on. And then we find out, like, nah, she's super vindictive because her reasoning for this is that basically Luke came here to the States and obviously she was living in London, but basically she packed up and got rid of everything, her home and everything. She quit everything just to move to the States with him. And then it's like, oh, and sometime afterwards, she he breaks up with me. And for him, it's like, you ambushed me. You came with all this baby stuff. Like, I told you I wasn't ready for kids. And so for her, it, she feels like, I've sacrificed everything in my life. I gave up my life for you and for you to just throw me to the side. I get why you're angry at, in this circumstances, but it still doesn't justify you trying to destroy someone's career over it. Because for her, it's like, oh, I'm destroying your life like you destroyed mine. You know, for her, it's like almost like it's fair. But even Lana calling her out about like, what do you want? Do you want revenge or do you want money? And she's like, I want both. It's like... Jeez, and she's like, oh yeah, like all all that's because it turns out the reason why these videos exist is because they were in a long distance relationship. I've been in long distance relationships before, so I understand those type of things. I'm like, right, you send stuff between you and your significant other, so it's like, it's not that strange of a concept. I'm like, yeah, we've all been there. It's like, this, you know, obviously it's a conversation, man or woman. No one, someone ever should use something that's intimate like that against you. It's garbage human beings who do that type of stuff. Let's be clear on that. So. And so it ends up being this interesting and complicated thing of like, 
like I said, Luke doesn't want to go harsh about this, but we kind of find out, like, oh, like, she's got, like, this yoga thing, because she wants to, like, that's why she was getting the money from it. It's not a loan. It's supposed to be a part of what you owe me, but that's the thing, like, Rebel had brought up, and that's a continued conversation. Like, if you pay her, she'll know that threats work, and that's the thing with blackmail. It will never stop. It's like, if you pay this first payment, it's like, okay, the money runs out. They're going to come out for another handout. It happens over and over and over and over again. There's no end to it if you do this. Once again, for Luke, he feels like he does owe her. Like, she kind of pushed for him to become a lawyer and everything. And for him, it's like, she's always been driven. But not only when it comes to herself, but the people, like, when she's driven about what she wants out of life, but also what someone else wants. So she kind of becomes, like, focused on it and kind of, like, pushes and becomes makes that kind of her everything her focus so that happens in Luke's case so it is a thing where he feels like he owes her so finding out about her circumstances her being like this yoga instructor but also like oh I'm also like this feminist they end up making a, basically a hit piece against her saying like oh like the fact of the matter is revenge form is a terrible thing she presents herself as this feminist but doing what she's doing is terrible you know you know obviously this happens to plenty of women and it's disgusting so it's, it's happening to this man as well it's disgusting we need to cancel her and it's like put that down and it's like take that down and Luke's like oh it's not too cool when someone like destroys your livelihood because she's like oh that's gonna it's like it's like she didn't even recognize the irony of like oh take that down it's gonna destroy my livelihood do you not hear yourself? And it's like, we didn't actually post the video, but she's like, Cassidy's like, I have a 16 year old sister who will po uh, post all this with, to her friends and stuff like that. So it'll go viral. So, and obviously for Tams, it's like, okay, Luke, I will, um, Lukey, like, come on, you can't do this and everything. And for him, it's, she's like, this isn't fair. He's like, fair? What you're doing to me is like, you owe me and stuff like that. It's like, you know, so. We didn't get the complete resolution of that to, the, to like what those conversations were like, but ultimately she ended up having to give over everything, all her passwords to make sure that nothing was in the cloud or on her computer or on her phone or anything. She even tried to spin it like, oh, but those, those videos are very important to me. It's like, the videos you're using to blackmail me? What? I would be like, honestly, I'd be like, get the fuck out of here with that bullshit. Like, that's, that's some twisted thing to be like, no, 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 but these are so important to me. How can I get rid of them? It's like, what? No, you can't claim they're important when you're using them to blackmail me. Screw you, dude. That's so twisted and messed up. Especially because he's not, you're going after him so hard and he's not responding. And I get it. It's more so than anything. It's like, right, this is probably a person you thought I'm going to spend the rest of my life with. I gave up so much of my life for this person. And it's like, you still love him on some level. And you kind of, in a twisted way, she was like, yeah, I kind of want you. It seemed like she was kind of implying, like, oh, like, I keep this because, like, there's a part of me that wants you back. But it's like, there's a vindictive side of me that wants to hurt you because it's like, we should be together, but we're not because you broke us up. But I'm willing to, like, it almost seemed a little like, Two-faced at a time. It, it was it was interesting. It was also interesting finding out why this was so important to Cassidy too. Because for Cassidy, it's like if this this situation were different, it, if the, if Luke was a woman, in particular a woman of color, this would be handled very differently. There'd be an investigation and stuff like that. But Luke and um, Luke and um, Benji had the uh, the luxury of both being. Hey, you're both. Uh, cis, well, at least in this case, you're a cis heterosexual male, so things work out for you. So I want to help Luke because by um, setting the standard with this situation that we can help women who are in this situation too where they don't end up losing their jobs as well. Like, you know, so by, you know, it's kind of like starting this fight from this front because also Luke is going to be using a lot of his pro bono time to be helping other people going through the same thing, dealing with like a revenge porn type of thing. So... Luckily, everything works out on that end. Obviously, they hear from Benji, like, oh, we're not taking a deal, which, you know, he made a bet with, like, uh, he knows them very well. He's like, yeah, they're not taking a deal. Cassidy's like, they're going to. And it's like, nope, they didn't. I just got $500 richer from that bet. But uh, sadly, they decided not to pay, take the uh, payment. And now it's like, oh, um, now we find out the valve's been stolen. So, like, their ace in the hole just got snatched away from them just when they found it. So, ah, uh, dude. Especially, too, because it's like, right, in that moment when Maddie gives birth and everything and she's holding her baby saying hi, like, knowing her mom's okay, but it's also, like, the, the, you know, the whole conversation, you know. Because we saw Rebel in a way we haven't really seen her because usually she's kind of at least kind of keeping things together. But this is the episode where things start falling apart for her because she talked about it, like, 
She's like, I miss Aunt, your Aunt Sharon. And it's like, because for her, she was always a voice of reason. Like, whether it was like, whether I couldn't get the cruise or whether I needed some advice, she always had the best advice. I'm in a situation right now where I can't call her. Like, my best friend, the person I turn through, any struggles I'm going through, not knowing where to kind of turn or what to do, she gave the best advice. I don't have her to turn to now. And, like, you know, Ziggy kind of talks about her being like that for everyone, you know? So... And, you know, all that stuff with Helen and Maddie, like, promising Maddie that she'll get her mom that surgery. But it's like, if we take this settlement, like, the valve is going to stay on the market and they're going to have to sign NDAs that can never do anything about it going forward. They can't speak out about the valve and everything. So, this is this is going to be a heartbreaking story. Win or lose. Ho Losing is going to be worse, but even winning, this is going to be a heartbreaking story on so many levels, dude. And I think that's what makes it so compelling is like, you know, trying, you know, trying to get justice, you know, um, even when you try to do things the right way, like the odds being stacked against you, whether it is just the system and the loopholes or just, you know, someone who's rich and powerful being able to get whatever they want, you know, so it's, it, it, I think it tells such a compelling story. I'm, I'm very interested to see where all of this ultimately ends up taking us going forward into the next episode. But uh, really, that's all I want to talk about. So the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, love life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and goodbye.